Drew Collins told me he would sit in his front yard every night, hoping Elizabeth would come home. And now he has hope that investigators will solve this case and arrest the person or people who killed her. It feels like it was yesterday to me. Like, it's, it might as well have been yesterday. That's all I think about, so. Um, it's July 14th. Do you have any theories on what happened? Absolutely. I have quite a few people of interest. Um, just from what people have told me, nothing that nothing that police have told me, because the police have told me nothing. So everything that I know, everything that I really know or heard is uh, rumors. So I have a couple different um, ideas of what might have happened. What has your communication been like with police, DCI, those connected to the case in the last really nine years? I talk to the police a lot. Um, they call me or I call them, so it's pretty open dialogue with them. Um, they can't tell me any specifics. Um, they try to tell me gen generally what they're working on, but no details. Um, they don't tell me if somebody's a suspect or not. Do you think that person is near here? Absolutely. They're right underneath us somewhere. It's probably somebody that nobody would notice. They're used to seeing them. So if they saw them that day, they wouldn't have thought nothing about it. Probably somebody like that. What makes you say that? Nobody saw nothing, really. Um, and it was at, at lunchtime on a summer day. Um, so I think it's probably someone from around here. They have to know the park here. They have to know the entrance or the exit to this park and they have to know seven bridges. Just not anybody's gonna know them places. Um, the seven bridges especially, it's so remote. It's in the middle of nowhere. Um, it has to be somebody local. No one's just gonna, no one's gonna drive that direction looking for a place to take the girls and go, oh, I'll go here. Uh, it was somebody that went to Seven Bridges because they knew how remote it was. And they knew they could at least get them there and be safe, you know, they would be safe. So it has to be somebody local. What would be, if you could share a message with that person, what would you say? If I could talk to, to that person or those people, I would just tell them like, technology is on our side, time is on our side. Uh, every night when you close your eyes, you don't know if tonight's gonna be the night that they knock on your door, but we're coming for you. And we'll, I'm not gonna stop. And I don't, I don't think these police are gonna stop either. We've got too much invested. The police have spent more on this case, I think, than any other case in Iowa history. We have a lot invested. The city has a lot invested. The people here want this person to be in prison. So nobody's, nobody's stopping. We're just getting going. How has it changed you as a person and really as a dad? I know, it's, I know I'm a, a lot different. I'm probably more uh, to myself now, more isolated. That's just how I deal with it. I've isolated myself a little bit. I do my work and I go home. So um, it's just hard to, to be out. Sometimes you just don't want to talk to anybody about it. And wherever you go, um, say if I go out or something, someone will want to talk to me about it. So a lot of times I just stay home. You said that when you see a child out even here in town playing by themselves that yeah, that makes you think well, that's a trigger when you see kids alone on just some side street or something you just want to follow them home but you don't want to scare them it's like uh you just want to like grab the parents and shake them it's like it wasn't that long ago two little girls disappeared drew says he and his ex-wife heather dealt with the grief in different ways we just grew apart um, like I said, I isolated. 
she did the opposite. Um, so I, I think it'll challenge the best of marriages and we had a good marriage. Um, but it definitely ruined it. Um, it was just hard. It's like most days you were just trying to get yourself through the day and you know you got you got other kids and I know I know that my other kids were affected because I don't think I was mentally there for them. And I know that, but I, you just do the best you can every day. Um, I, like I said, I still had to work. I still had to make sure bills are paid and stuff like that. So you just got to work through all that stuff. And a lot of times you get done with the day and that's all you could, you did all you could do. You know, you're just exhausted just mentally, physically. Um, it's, it's, it's hard. And though answers are slow to come in, he says he's grateful for the answers he does have. The thing is, is like, there's a lot of families that get nothing. So I'm pretty fortunate. Like, I have good contact with the FBI, the DCI. Um, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of families have their, their kids just disappear and there's nothing. Um, so I'm pretty fortunate. I found my daughter, my, my daughter's, I know where she is, I know where my niece is at. Um, it's, I still want answers. I feel like um, until I get those answers, uh, I'm gonna be like this. And I wanna, I wanna get past this and uh, on to the next phase of this, which would be uh, putting this person in prison. Drew remains in regular contact with investigators who say tips are still coming in. Tomorrow at 6, we'll talk about where the investigation stands and why sensitive information could compromise the case. In the studio, Nicole Agee, KCRG-TV 9 News.